So starting in 2019, in July, the LSAT is going digital. Specifically, in July, half of test takers will receive the digital format, half will receive the paper and pencil format, LSAC chooses for you, and you don't get any advance notice. I'm going to show you what the digital LSAT looks like. This is on LSAC's website, familiar.lsac.org. You can play around with one of the digital LSATs. This is prep test 73, and they have some cool functionalities here. You could see they have a countdown timer. You could see that they let you increase the text size if you want to, and you can increase the brightness. Now, this doesn't work on, on the desktop, but it does on mobile and tablet. So yes, the digital LSAT will be on a tablet, a Microsoft Surface Go specifically. And so this is the layout of a particular logic game. As you can see here, there is very little space below that, but that's totally fine because you're not doing work on the tablet. You're doing your work separately on scrap paper. And like I said, you have virtually unlimited scrap paper. So here is a digital LSAT logic game. You can see there's only one question per, per screen. So you have to flip ahead to the future questions and kind of go back and forth. And you, and you can see this little, little black mark here telling you which question you're on. And you can click around it at a moment's notice from one to the other very seamlessly. There are some cool interactive features here. You can underline, as you can see here. You can highlight, as you can see. You can even erase what you highlighted, erase what you underlined. You can highlight in different colors. These are all cool features, and I wouldn't really bother with any of them. I think they're a huge waste of time and not going to really serve you in any way. I wouldn't bother with these. I would do your work on the side because the biggest issue is that you cannot draw freehand on the tablet the way that you could on a piece of paper. And like they give you a stylus, but I don't know what good it is really because all that you do is select these different functions. You can't draw freehand on it the way that you would on a piece of paper or the way that you would, let's say, on a whiteboard. So let's say if I were using a whiteboard on a tablet, for example, I could do something like this and draw whatever I wanted, like maybe make five slots for five different letters if I'm doing like, let's say, an ordering game. But you can't do that on the digital LSAT. I don't know why not, but it is what it is. We have to deal with it. So consider the limitations that you have before you and use the scrap paper that they're giving you. And of course, practice like it's game day. I suggest getting a tablet. I hate to say that because it's a couple hundred bucks, of course, but it's well worth it. If it gets you even a single point more on the LSAT to have that increased familiarity with the tablet, it's worth it. Now, LSAC is using a Microsoft Surface Go. You don't have to use that though. You could use a Samsung Galaxy if you want. You could use an iPad if you want. Just get a stylus in particular. I think you can get one on Amazon for like 10 bucks or even less. It's well worth practicing like it's game day. If you can't get a tablet or you want alternatives, you could get the PDFs depending on how you access them. You could then put the PDFs on a tablet, use a stylus and use the annotation feature in Preview for Mac or some other program. And that could be a useful way to get used to the format. Now, it's not all bad though. There are a couple of good things. I, th I think the, the countdown timer is somewhat useful. I think the text enlarging is somewhat useful. If let's say you have eyesight issues or you just feel more comfortable with it, you can also increase the line spacing if you want, which might be useful for logical reasoning or reading comp, depending on what works best for you. Now, there are some questions here. I'm going to see if any of those are related once again. Bubbling. So yeah, so bubbling in at the bottom, we've got, let's say I bubbled in A, then it shows up on the bottom left. Let's say I want to eliminate choice B. It crosses off there automatically. And then if I go to question six, I bubble that in. And let's say choice C, it bubbles in there. I can jump to four, bubble that in. So you can do things in any, any order very easily and see at a glance what you've done, what you haven't. You can also flag a question. So if I, let's say I wanted to flag number seven, that shows up as being flagged if I want to come back to it later. So you could bubble throughout. That is a nice time-saving feature. I think the flagging is also a benefit too to quickly see at a glance what you've done, what you haven't. So that is a plus of the digital format. So just keep that in mind. You, you could bubble throughout. Maybe that saves you 30 seconds or a minute or two. And that's extraordinarily useful. 